Hi, my name is Christina Bowen. I'm a student at US University. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Dr. Jean Watson. Dr. Jean Watson is a nurse theorist and she is credited for coming up with the whole concept that nursing is a caring science. She's come up with a um, list of 10 caritas process. It's called, and this is 10 parts of caring for nurses. Today, I'm going to be talking about Caritas process number seven. This process is engaging in genuine teaching learning experiences within context of caring relationship, attending to whole person and subjective meaning, attempt to stay within others frame of reference, evolving toward coaching role versus conventional imparting of information. I want to show you how Caritas process number seven applies to the actual nursing practice. And so I'm going to be using examples from my nursing practice. Um, I am an advice nurse, so I speak to patients over the phone. Teaching is a big part of my role as an advice nurse. And while I'm teaching, it's very important that I individualize the teaching that I do for each patient that I speak to. I need to make sure that it's um, going to meet their needs. I need to use appropriate language for each patient. And of course, the big thing is that I need to be respectful, caring, and understanding in each interaction that I have with patients. Some of the ways that I can individualize the care that I give to my patients is by listening to my patients. It's very important that I consider the needs that are specific to them and what's important to them and then give them care and teaching for their particular needs. One example would be if I have a patient call who has a cough and a runny nose and um, then I start to give them information and start to teach them and I'm spending a lot of time on maybe talking about a sore throat and how they can deal with a sore throat and yet they don't even have a sore throat. They call because they have a cough and runny nose. It shows that I, I haven't really listened to them and if if I'm speaking with them and giving them a lot of information or trying to teach them about that, they're going to tune me out because they think, okay, she has not listened to me. She's just going down a list of things she needs to say when really I need care for myself and the symptoms that I have. So I wanna make sure that I really do meet the needs of that particular patient, not just check off boxes. Another way that I can show respect to patients is by making sure that I'm not being patronizing as well as make sure I'm not going above a, a patient's head. I want to speak at an age appropriate level and uh, use appropriate conversation style. If I'm speaking with a five year old and we're talking about bowel issues, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm not using words like um, bowel movement. I'm probably going to stick with a more simple terms such as poop, which I may not use, you know, routinely or, you know, in my charting, but I do need to make sure I am speaking appropriately and at the right age level for a patient. And at the same time, if I'm speaking to maybe a, a 35 year old man and he's telling me that, you know, he's having pain in his left deltoid. I, I need to go ahead and take that into consideration and think, okay, I can use language that's um, more specific and maybe he has some healthcare background and it would be appropriate to speak at that, that age level as well as um, conversation style. And I don't want to dumb things down so that, you know, it would be just um, insulting. You know, I don't want to be patronizing. So definitely kind of, you know, once you've started talking with a patient, you're, you're already assessing that. You're assessing what age level, and not just age level, but also understanding level. And then you want to use that, use that information that you've gathered and assess and make sure that you are showing them respect by speaking on their level. Nursing is such a caring science and part of that caring is definitely going to be portrayed through our communication. So as nurses, we do need to make sure that our interactions with patients are completely respectful. We need to show that we're non-judgmental and open. If 
we don't show that we're non-judgmental and we're if we sound like we're very close-minded patients aren't going to open up to us they're not going to speak freely they're not going to tell you what the true problems are they're not going to be willing to to tell me as an advice nurse what they've already tried they're going to be afraid that I'm either not listening or else I'm going to be judgmental and I do need to know you know that kind of information I do need to make the patients feel that they can open up to me and be honest with me because it could save a life if if I know what really happened so it's very important to show that I'm caring and understanding and this includes you know caring um, from culture to culture and um, you know being aware that there may be differences and then listening and being non-judgmental with those differences and um, being understanding I need to show that you know I care about them as a person because I do and it's important for nurses to show that as they care for their patients because it really does help patients to feel like they can trust us and communicate with us and, and that makes a, a big difference as far as how we can care for them and that helps us to be able to care for our patients better. Thank you for watching my presentation on Dr. Jean Watson's Caritas Process Number 7.